So hi, welcome back to the channel and um, this is the first video, uh, first proper video anyway, in a new series where I'm going to attempt to build this Golden Arrow uh, kit for uh, either the Earl or the Countess from the Welsh Pool on Lanfair uh, Railway. I'm going to build the Earl uh, and that's because the Earl was the first steam uh, locomotive I ever had the opportunity to drive. Um, I did a video uh, last June um, where I talked about the fact that I'd bought this kit um, and um, a kit for the first steam locomotive I think I ever saw as well. Um, so there's some details about what was in the kit uh, in that video and I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but um, this, one well, of the, the modelling forums are on narrow gauge uh, modelling online. Um, a number of people are currently building uh, this kit and the suggestion was that anybody else who got it and wanted to build it if we all kind of built it at the same time we could share hints and tips and things like that so although I'm still in the middle of con converting the Thomas and Friends loco to Dolgok and building the four-wheel battery electric loco with my son um, I'm going to start this one as well um, so before I actually started doing the build I just thought I'd, I'd do a quick uh, introductory video uh, remind people what I'm trying to build and I'll put a photo up here somewhere um, of the Earl uh, with me in the cab at the regulator to give you an idea of um, of what we're what we're aiming for in the end um, and if we have a look in the box <coughs> um, this one was bought as a second hand a partially started kit uh, as far as more everything is here um, and actually very little was done so you can see some things were taken off the etch uh, but as far as more everything actually is still in the kit um, the only thing really that had been done was some of the white metal parts had been glued together um, but I gave it a bit of a shake as you can see there's, there's glue on the back of here but I gave it a bit of a shake and it all fell apart um, so I've got to clean these up and um, and stuff before I can start but most of it seems to all be uh, all be here um, the one thing that obviously isn't in this box um, are a motor, wheels, gears um, and things like that so um, I did have to buy a few extra pieces um, and I wanted to show you those as I say again before I started uh, putting the kit together so <clears throat> let's get that box out of the way and have a look at this box and this has got um, parts from two different suppliers in it uh, we'll look at this, the simple one first so this is a um, gearbox and all the gears and the motor uh, this comes from high level models um, so I used their uh, one of their gearboxes when I built Iver um, recently well not that recently but when I built Iver I used the, used the gearbox um, nice and easy to build straightforward no no particular problems I think this is the slimliner plus if my memory serves um, so that shouldn't be shouldn't be too difficult I just have to kind of um, fold that up following the instructions and put all the gears together uh, and it should go together quite nicely um, <clears throat> so then the other thing I have uh, which I haven't really looked at this in, in lots of detail is some parts from Mosquito models um, so these were bought through light, light railway stores which is what Narrow Planet used to be called uh, was Na Narrow Planet originally um, Neil, who's behind the range, um, knew what I was uh, intending to use them for, so actually sent me some extra parts um, just in case because he wasn't quite sure what I would need. Uh, so let's just have a quick, a quick look at these. Uh, we'll start with the the obvious one and the only the only thing I've opened so far. Um, so these are the wheels. They're the ten millimeter diameter wheels. Um, they're really quite, really quite nice. Um, yeah, really nice profile and everything else. Uh, you'll notice that this side is live to the axle, uh, whereas this one you can see it's got a plastic uh, bushing in the centre of the wheel so that the, the wheel is insulated. Uh, it's quite nice because it means I'll only have to uh, do pickups to one side um, of the locomotive. Um, the locomotive is what we refer to as outside framed and has... Um, motion on the outside so it's kind of difficult to see on the picture here but essentially um, the frames are outside the wheel so you can only see part of the wheels um, but then it has um, the the motion on the outside so you need kind of longer axles to get all the way through the wheel the frame um, and there'll be bearings in the frame uh, and then into the fly cranks and the motion on the outside um, so that's why I've got some extra axles because obviously with these pinpoints uh, there's nothing to put uh, fly cranks onto. Um, so <clears throat> let's have a look at these. 
Now there are two different lengths in here and this is where Neil sent me some spare parts because we weren't entirely sure without having got the, sh the chassis for the model already built up we weren't exactly sure what length um, I would need and whether I'd need the longer or the shorter ones of these so you can see that they are um, <clears throat> there are two different lengths um, actually got yeah two different lengths um, of axle um, they're only, only slightly different in lateral total length um, but the nice thing is they have um, square ends um, which means that you can you can see that there square ends um, so this bit will run through the, the frame and I think I'm probably going to need the longer versions but as I say we'll see um, yeah so um, so yeah so the, the, the square ends are designed this is the, the tricky bit for fly cranks so that you don't have to um, quarter because when you put the fly cranks on you need to make sure that they're, they're um, at 90 degrees to each other on either side of the locomotive um, which can be a bit of a tricky a tricky thing to do um, so Neil also sells uh, the plastic fly, fly cranks I get my words right um, so these are just that's just a bag of bearings I'm not gonna open that there's nothing particularly interesting in there um, but this should have the fly cranks in them, they're, they're tiny, I don't want to lose too many. Um, but here we go. They're a bit difficult to see, but basically um, there's a, an end on this side um, for the axle, and then a pin here um, where the, the coupling rod will go around. A very, very small, difficult to see. Um, but that should make fitting them uh, nice and easy. Um, so I might need some screws or pins to make up the actual the pin part of that. I don't know quite what I've got in stock on what I'll need to order, uh, but at least fitting them to the to the loco should be straightforward. Um, so yeah, so I just need to kind of um, I will need to when I've built up the chassis work out exactly which axles I'm using, and then hopefully um, everything will just slide on uh, slide on nicely. We'll have to we'll have to see, um, but that's the plan. Um, so I say I don't know quite how fast I'm going to get through building this, um, but the plan is that I will at least try and do some. Um, it's useful, um, especially I know that there are the, the, well there are suggestions that there are issues with the kit. There is um, an issue with the length of the chassis versus the length of the body. Um, so there's a slight modification to be made there, uh, plus some other bits and pieces where people have had problems in the past. So it'd be useful if I'm building it at the same time as a bunch of other people who many of whom have. Uh, more skills, more experience in building etched kits, um, so I can ask questions and things as we go along. Um, but yeah, I'll document the progress here as a series of videos as I have done in the past, um, but I'm not quite sure um, how quickly this will move on compared with some of the other the other things I'm building. And as I say, because I'm, I'm tending to try and publish like one video a week, um, things may get out of sequence and you may find that actually I'm a bit further in front than the videos the videos report so if you're following also following along on the forum and I'll put a link um, in the description if anybody wants to follow along um, then you might find that the, the videos on the forum are a bit out of sync but hopefully hopefully everything will make sense and hopefully we'll end up with a nice version of the Earl um, at the end of it all so thanks for watching Okay, that actually happened uh, faster than I expected. I've actually done some work. Um, okay, it's minor, but here we go. Let's have a quick look. Um, so before I start bending up the folding up the chassis, I wanted to make sure I'd got at least um, figured out the wheels um, because obviously I want to be able to test that they fit in the chassis um, properly and that they're the right width and everything else um, before I solder things together. Um, so I took one of the original wheel sets um, which, as I say, have these pinpoint endings, and I've fitted it to uh, the longer axles with the square ends. So you can see the, you can kind of see the difference, um, quite significant difference in length, uh, and the square axle instead of the pinpoint. Um, it was actually quite difficult. Normally, when I've fitted, um, when I've had to do wheels, take wheels on and off in the past. Um, it's been reasonably straightforward. I have this um, gear puller, um, cheap Amazon thing. I'll stick a link in the description if I can find one. Um, 
works works really well uh, have a plate on the bottom and it just kind of pushes out the axle uh, getting it off wasn't a problem um, but the getting it on was a bit harder so if you look at the the new axles and the old ones are actually the same the ones that came off when it focuses there you go and you can see that on the left um, the axle is smooth whereas on the right there's this knurled bit um, so the smooth side um, goes onto the insulated wheel so that's the one with the plastic bush and the knurled side fits onto the um, the side with the um, with the uninsulated wheel, so the old metal wheel. Um, and uh, as I say, getting it off wasn't wasn't too tricky, but getting the knurled side to fit back into into the disc wheel was really quite tricky. Um, you can push it on so far, but then there was definitely a gap, and it wasn't all the way on. Uh, I tried sticking it in, kind of. Uh, upside down in the machine vice and then gently tapping the end with a hammer um, to try and push it down didn't work very well in the end I've discovered that I can just and I mean just get the wheel set if I open the gear pull all the way up I can just about get the gear the wheel set and I mean it's literally it's very tight fit the 10 millimeter wheels just fit inside the gear puller um, so I can put the plate on the I have it the right way around I can put the plate on the bottom like that um, slide it in just uh, and then I can push on the end of the axle from the opposite side to push it home into the into the wheel and that's worked um, so now I can't see any of the knurled bit um, in the in in the place and the wheel is right up to the the shoulder on the axle um, so that looks like it's okay and it um, it rolls nice and smoothly uh, across the mat there's no obvious wobbling which means I've got the wheels on um, nice and straight to the axle um, so I have to do one so that's one plane set I need to do another plane set and then the third one will need the gear fitting um, so I won't do that yet but I'll do at least two uh, and then I can use those to make sure that the chassis is square as I as I fold it up um, so yeah so that's all I've got so far and, and I think Neil was right I managed to it looks like I managed to definitely order the wrong um, axles when I originally placed an order and Neil was very kind to send me some extras so these are I think these are the ones that Neil suggested um, and they're the they're the right length um, the ones I ordered um, they're just in this packet here uh, are they in this packet? no they're in this packet oh, if we have a look at these in comparison um, so the they're not much longer total length um, but if you look at them what is different is that this solid section is a lot longer um, so these are designed for a wider gauge um, when you put the wheels on they wouldn't be able to get close enough for the nine millimeter gauge so I'm not quite sure how I managed to mess that up when looking at the uh, the website for ordering so thank goodness for Neil um, picking me out of that um, that mess um, otherwise I'd have ended up with completely the, the wrong axles um, so anyway progress um, not much but some and um, it means that I can you know once I've got two once I've done this again for the other wheel um, I might actually try folding up the, the chassis but that will definitely wait for whenever the next video is